Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll review the DMAIC roadmap again and dig a little deeper into the third layer of the measure phase of DMAIC. Just as with the define phase, this third layer will serve like a roadmap to navigate you through the different tools and resources necessary when working in the measure phase of a DMAIC project. So let's begin by looking again at the five basic steps for resolving a problem. As we talked about previously, we, we introduced the five basic steps for resolving a problem. And then we applied those five basic steps to the DMAIC methodology, the five phases of the Six Sigma DMAIC methodology. And last time in the lesson, we had also talked about the high-level questions we would ask for each of those phases in the DMAIC methodology. We also took that a step further. That's what we call level one. That is, at the top level, we have each of these different questions that we're asking for each of the phases within the DMAIC methodology. So we dug last time into taking those, those questions to another layer, a second layer, going a little deeply like this, where for the each phase, again, we've got the defined phase where we have the top level question that we're asking ourselves. And again, we said, if you cannot answer yes to that question, then you ask yourself the second layer of questions that are in here. And here's a guide for the different tools or resources that can help you in helping to answer those questions. And that can ult ultimately help you in answering this top level question. And what we said is that the goal is to try to answer each of these top level questions for each phase. And then as you do answer yes to those questions, then you move on to the next phase and then to the sub questions within those phases and so on all the way through the control phase. That's the introduction again to what we did last time when we talked about the level one and level two questions for the DMAIC roadmap. Okay, now let's dig a little deeper by looking into the third layer, the measure phase of DMAIC. So now we're going to go beyond the second level of questions like we had before at the level one and level two of the DMAIC roadmap. And more specifically, we're going to target the measure phase at the level three. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that and explore some of these different questions we'd ask at that third and deepest level. So again, at this point, when we're beginning the measure phase, we should have already been able to answer all the questions associated with the define phase before we can begin this one. So if we have answered yes to all those for the define phase, now we're ready to begin this measure phase where we first ask ourselves at a high level, do you know the potential root causes, that is the inputs or the X's, and have enough reliable data to test those, to test those root causes. At the measure phase, that's what we're trying to do at a high level. So if we cannot answer yes to that question, this again is where we're gonna dig down into these next layer of questions. So at this second level here, the first question we'd ask ourselves is, do you know what metric reflects the output described by the problem statement? If you're not sure, then you want to explore looking into the project Y and defining that project Y or the output in order to answer that question. Once you've got that, you can move on to the next second level question, which is, do you know how to define defects in the process and or in the outputs? Well, if you can't answer yes to that, we're going to move on to this third layer here, beginning with this question. Do you know what are the customer's performance standards, like the lower spec limit or the upper spec limit defined here? If you're not really sure, then that's where you want to understand the requirements as defined by the customer or more aptly expressed as the voice of the customer or the VOC. Once you can answer yes, you know what those are, you move on to the next third level question, which is, do you have the key operational definitions like a defect or what's defective or what is a unit, what's an opportunity, or any other key acronyms or terms that are necessary for the project? Well, in that case, that would be the operational definitions that would help you in defining those and making sure you have all those key critical elements defined. Once you can answer those, you can move on to the next second level question, which is, do you have enough data measuring the Y and the potential inputs, that is the X's? Well, if you're not really sure about that, that's where you're gonna to begin to ask all these third level questions. We're gonna start off with, do you know what the potential X's are for the problem? It is those things that are expressing the theoretical significance, or the significance is what's logical, what makes sense from a theoretical standpoint. Well, it's the c &E diagram, the cause and effect diagram, or also called the Ishikawa diagram or fishbone diagram, as well as the five whys. Those are some of the tools that can help us understanding what the theoretical significance is, what those potential X's are at that level. Next, once we've got that, we can move on to the next, which is, do you know which of those X's may have the most potential influence? Or kind of like exploring the empirical level of significance. That is the level of significance that's experiential and, and what we can experience and observe. Well, that might be the C&E matrix of what we suspect could be the, the most critical root, potential root causes. And again, this is the cause and effect matrix that might get us down to that level in answering that question. 
Once we've got that, we'll move on to the next question. Do you know what data is necessary to measure the Y in the most influential axis? Well, if we're not sure, then we would explore using the data collection plan or the DCP to help us to answer that one. Once we've got that, we'll move to the next one. Do you know how much data you're going to need, especially if you're only going to be sampling data? Well, it's the sample size calculator that might be able to help us in answering that. Next, do you know what time frame your data should span? Well, we need to make sure we have a clear understanding of what short and long-term data is and how it's represented in our data to make sure we're covering the right level of, of time reflected in our data. Once we can answer that, then we move on to the last third level question here, which is if collecting the data manually, for example, if you're using time studies or observations or having people report things on tick sheets, do you have a plan and the support needed to collect it? You're going to need sponsorship or buy-in from your team to make sure that you've got their support and making sure you're collecting the data in the right way so you can build the type of data that you can trust. Last. With the second level question we're going to ask ourselves is, do you know if your collected data is accurate, repeatable, and reproducible? This is absolutely essential because without having data that we can trust, which is really what we're getting the heart of here, then any analysis we do on that data isn't going to be valuable to us at all. So it's here that we want to use the measurement system analysis, or MSA, in order to make sure that our data is accurate, repeatable, and reproducible so we can trust it. Again, once we can answer all these questions that are in here, we answer yes to those, then we should be answering yes to this top level question where we know we have identified the potential root causes and we have enough reliable data to test those root causes. And again, as we've expressed before, the outputs we might expect from the measure phase would include an updated project storyboard, the definition of the voice of the customer, what the Y and the X's are, and a reliable and relatively complete data set that we're going to use as we then move on to the analyze phase. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. I'd like you to try to find at least two different projects that you've worked on in the past or may have led yourself within the past. And for each of those different projects, ask yourself some of these questions that we've reviewed at the third level within the measure phase. And as you ask yourself these questions, find within them any questions or any related tools or resources that were not necessarily addressed in that particular project or issue that you had worked. Why were those things not covered or included within your project that you worked? Why were they not addressed at all? And then what different outcome or results could have been realized if you had addressed those missing elements when you first executed the project? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.